Entertainment. What up? Welcome in to another episode of Mike on the Mic, episode 11. I am a spinoff show from our parent show twist the weekend sports talk. Thank you for tuning in live on Facebook, on the rtfsportsnetwork.com, and all the podcast platforms. Sports is back. It's back. People, we have sports. Oh, I've long been waiting to talk some sports with all of you. We've had some baseball. We are less than a week away from the NHL in the bubble that is the NBA. Training camp for the NFL will be reporting next week. I mean, this is just a lovely time. I feel like it's Christmas, and I'm excited. Excited to talk to you. We are a live interactive show, so please feel free to comment, and I will interact with you if I feel the need to do so. Greg Bauman from Green Bay Greg, another spinoff show under the RTF and Twist umbrella, says, nice lid. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I got a uh, Mike on the Mic Vikings color hat made, uh, Green Bay Greg. We do have some new time slots on the RTF Sports Network. I want to touch real quick before we get into some sports stories. So starting August 3rd, the Twist brand is taking over the 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central time slot monday through friday kicking it off mondays with twist tuesdays with mike on the mic wednesdays with benzie's bit thursdays with twist again and fridays with green bay greg so that again is monday through friday at that 2 p.m eastern 1 p.m central time slot so we're excited about that. We're going to record some new commercials for the new time slot um, and get into all that. But first, let's get in to some sports stories across the league. Mike Tyson is back, and he is to face Roy Jones Jr. September 12th for an exhibition match. So former undisputed heavyweight champ Mike Tyson, he's making his comeback. Dude's 54. He's going to fight Roy Jones in an eight-round exhibition in Cali. So quote from Tyson, it's because I can do it. Well, of course it's because you can do it there, Mike. We, We get that, all right? So it's because I can do it, and I believe other people believe they can do it too. Just because we are 54 doesn't mean that we have to start a new career and our lives are totally over. Not when you feel as beautiful as I do. And I'm sure that other people feel the same way too. So Tyson ended with a 50-6 and record, Roy Jones 66-9. and I can't speak for seeing Roy Roy Jones as of uh, late, but Mike Tyson, you still couldn't pay me to take a punch from that motherfucker. I mean, he is in shape like nobody's business. I mean, I'm not I'm not touching it. Absolutely not. Oh, I have an update here. Switch. GBG is on Wednesdays. Benzie is on Fridays. That's right. That's right. Our precious Benzie. We needed to cater to him. Make sure that he could get that time slot done. So little update there. Sorry about that. Thank you, Greg, for tuning in. And for watching. Speaking of old former athletes in the news, Terrell Owens, T.O., 46 years old, raced Tyreek Hill and kept it surprisingly close. So he's been lobbying to come back and play um, since he basically left the NFL and found no takers. Uh, He'll turn 47 years old in December, and he's probably not coming back. So Owens raced Tyreek Hill. Um, who's basically, his nickname is the Cheetah, and he's one of the fastest players in the NFL. He got a got a head start and, and won, but, I mean, it was close. Anything to get back in the news. Um, but speaking of the NFL, there will be no preseason. We broke the news on Twist yesterday live. There will be no preseason in the NFL this year. Oh, 
I know. It's just, it's devastating. I just love tuning in to all the preseason games. So I'm not very happy about it. It's a, it's a very sad day. Another sad day for the Buffalo Bills and new era. This isn't a new era hat, but I have plenty of them. So they prematurely ended the naming rights deal via the Buffalo News. They have agreed to terminate the naming rights relationship at the team's stadium. So it was signed in 2016. The seven-year deal reportedly had a value of $40 million. The details of the separation could include some sort of payment by New Era over the ability to exit the deal early. So I found this interest, interesting. So 40 mil over seven years, you break it down, it's $5.7 million a year. That's dirt cheap for a super bowl ad you're basically paying that for a 30 second commercial once during the super bowl but this you get the naming rights to an nfl stadium i wouldn't want the naming rights to the buffalo bills but 5.7 million dollars is fairly cheap so i did want to talk about some notables of the miami dolphins their stadium is the hard rock stadium that's right hard rock stadium Current deal terms, 18 years, $250 million. That was signed in August of 2016 and ends in 2034. So that's a big whopper right there. An even bigger one, and this is because it's two teams at MetLife Stadium, both the New York Jets and the New York Giants. A 25-year deal for $400 million. That ends in 2036. My squad, the Minnesota Vikings, U.S. Bank Stadium. It's a 25-year deal, 220 mil, ends in 2040. Wow, with the coin shortage, I don't even know if we'll need U.S. Bank here in 2040. But we'll see. The Detroit Lions, Ford Field, it was a 20-year contract estimated at a total of $40 million. That was back in 96. So if you started these back in the 90s, I'd probably try and end them prematurely and get that big, fat whopper of a deal um in the over 200 millions not the 40 the cowboys at&t stadium their duration is undisclosed but they're basically at 17 to 19 million dollars a year and lastly the new orleans saints the mercedes-benz superdome back in 2011 they signed a 10-year 55 mil that ends next year so that'll be interesting when that comes out i assume they'll you know sign until uh 2075 for Seven hundred million dollars, something odd like that. Next in the news is the next big Manning Arch. I'm guessing that's short for their dad, Archie Manning. So Arch splashed onto the scene in his freshman year at Isidore Newman School in New Orleans, where Eli Peyton and Arch's dad Cooper. So his dad is Cooper. It's not Eli or Peyton. It's the brother who sucked at football whose son is emerging onto the scene. So all previously starred by throwing for 34 touchdowns as varsity's starting quarterbacks. The class of 2023 prospect is now six foot three and 190 pounds. So he's got that frame like his uncles just needs to gain a couple more pounds, a couple cheeseburgers, a couple 13, 14. As of February, he had yet to receive any scholarship offers because the family has declined them. According to sports illustrated, though their patience in the recruit crew, Recruiting process has done little to fade the spotlight on him. So they're just pushing it back. He's going to have plenty, plenty of suitors for him. Michael Jordan Jumpman logo to appear on some NBA uniforms next season. The NBA and Jordan brand announced Tuesday that all 30 NBA statement edition uniforms will now feature the Jumpman logo. The statement edition uniform is one of the league's alternative jerseys. They're dope. I like them. And I'm glad that Jordan, not a big fan of him as a player. Obviously, I respect him. Uh, did a lot for the game. I'm a LeBron guy. If you know me, you know that. But LeBron can't come out with a good shoe to save his life. His shoes suck. So I'm all on the Jumpman, the Jordan brand. I got plenty of Jays myself. And... I love it. So, yeah, throw it on the jerseys. I'll buy a T-Wolves Jumpman jersey. You think I won't? Let's go. So that's sports stories around the league. I didn't want to really touch in on 
scores and updates of baseball. I mean, the Twins are one and one. Yeah, it's going on. Not a big fan of the cardboard cutouts in the stands. I know Benzie and Greg want advertisement and blah, blah, blah. But I'm very, very, very excited that sports are just back. So I mentioned the Twins. As always, I'm going to touch on sports, but I'm also going to keep it local. Because I want to talk about my shit, my teams, my city, my state. Let's keep it local. There's a scouting on Rashad Bateman that says he's similar to Michael Thomas. Yeah, I said it. Can't guard Mike. So a little breakdown of him. Rashad Bateman, he's 6'2", 210, had 60 catches for 1,200 yards and 11 touchdowns last year. Now, depending on what happens this year, if there's no college football, if it's shortened, honestly, if I were Rashad, I wouldn't play. As of now, he's projected in the first round. So just sit tight, get your money. Um, so again, this was a breakdown online, what he liked. Bateman has experience playing outside and in the slot. He uses a variety of releases to beat press coverage and is very precise, clean route runner. He doesn't drift at the top of his route and generates tremendous separation on double moves. His instincts are on display when the play breaks down, showing an act for adjusting and uncovering to provide an outlet when the quarterback scrambles. Well, that's a lot to like. Well, holy shit. I don't even need to need to read anymore. So his comparison, like I said, he sees similarities of Michael Thomas when he was coming out of Ohio State. Ideal blend of size and strength. Either way, as a Gopher fan, you'll love to see a receiver go in the first round. Rashad Bateman's a beast, and he's going to play for many years in the NFL. Tanner Morgan's even emerging as a first-round pick in the next couple years. The Minnesota State Fair. We all love the State Fair here in Minnesota. If you're listening from out of state, which I'm sure you are, you have your own state fairs, but it's not as big and it's not as good as ours. It did get closed because of the COVID, because of the corona, because of this bullshit called life that we're living right now. But the Minnesota State announced that they are uh, going to do a drive through event. I'm not looking forward to that. The food parade is not a curbside pickup situation like some state fair food vendors have been doing around. All vehicles will follow the same 1.5 mile route through the fairgrounds and pass by all 16 vendors. To me, this sounds like a horrible idea. When I go to the state fair, I don't don't eat the night before. You know, you got to got to walk in feeling real hungry. But the nice thing about it is you have all day to eat. So you go get your favorite thing first, you go do a ride, you go check out a couple things, then you go to the next thing. This, you literally have to drive through and get all six. What the hell am I supposed to do with 16 meals? I'm not Green Bay Greg. I can't eat all that shit. It's a good idea trying to get the businesses out there to make some money with the loss of the fare, but I'm going to pass. Uh, Justin Jefferson signs his rookie contract with the Vikes. They've basically signed everybody uh but he's the stud wide receiver the potential superstar that's trying to slide in to that uh stefan dig so they've agreed to terms he will receive a 7.1 signing bonus as a part of a fully guaranteed 13.112 million dollars must be rough i'm excited to see him throw that number 18 purple on Speaking of purple, the Vikings Inc. long-term con contract extension with Zimmer. He's entering the seventh season as the Vikings head coach, posting a 57, 38, and 1 record. That one would piss me off, fucking ties. 59.9% winning percentage and has led the team to three playoff appearances, including a trip to the NFC Championship. He's the third winningest head coach in franchise history. We touched on this on Twist a little bit. You got to do it if you're the Vikings. To me, they just had a replay last night on NFL Network of the Vikings and 49ers game from last year. And really, that changed my opinion of what we talked about on the show yesterday. It just brought back all those feelings that I had watching the game and the game plan that the Vikings and Zimmer put together and continued throughout the game to do literally nothing about. Um, it was pathetic. 
it pissed me off at that time. Um, I was done with them. You know, I don't, I don't want to see that shit. And if you can't execute game plans in the middle of the game, what are you doing as a head coach? You know, your offense and defense coordinator, it was so stale. The fact that they came in with what they did, but then they didn't even switch it up during the game. And we just got our asses kicked. You know, it was close too throughout the game. Even after halftime, I think we were down three. So to me, I guess you got to do it for the continuity and for the guys. And it's a, you know, I think it's a three-year deal after this year. Um, but not a huge fan. I'm going to need to see need to see more. I mean, Zimmer and his defense and what he's done to this franchise and turn it around is great. But in big games, you know, clock management, he's always coming up short on shit like that. And it's like, you're a head coach in the NFL, bro. You got to get your shit together. So we'll see. Uh, Glenn Taylor exploring Wolf sale. And former player Kevin Garnett is interested. So Taylor said in a statement on Tuesday that he's retained the Rain Group. So the Rain Group, there were reports that the Wilfs, owner of the Minnesota Vikings, were front runners to get the job. Well, really, the truth is the Rain Group reached out to the Wilfs because they're billionaires and because they own the Vikings and they're already local. They figured, why not give them a shot? And uh, hey, are you guys interested? Well, really, they're not. Um, Taylor does not want to sell the team to a group that wants to move out of Minneapolis. To me, the only shot of really solidifying that is selling to Kevin Garnett and a group of rich folks. You can't really put it in a, a statement selling to a team. Yeah, um, you can't move or I'm not selling it. They'll just say, yeah, we're not going to move the team and buy it. And then the Supersonics are going to be back in two years. So really, it sucks because I love the Wolves and Glenn Taylor's been great about keeping them and saving them and having them here in Minnesota. But it's a it's a coin flip if you sell. So Kevin Garnett, not sure he would make the you know best uh, minority owner. You've seen what Jordan's done in Charlotte, but he will not let the team leave. And really, that's all I care about. So that's all I got for keeping it local last week we did some over and under on the afc east that we did i promise you this week we were going to do the afc north so we're just going to keep kind of moving through them afc north baltimore ravens so this we're going to do uh, over under 3,199.5 passing yards for Lamar Jackson. It would be surprising if Jackson were held below that mark. He threw for 3,127 last season. He also ran for over 1,002. So over under 3,199.5. I'm going with over. Over by a lot. I'm th 36, 37. Over Cincinnati Bengals sticking with the quarterbacks over under 3,746.5 passing yards. The past two number one picks, Kyler Murray and Baker Mayfield, both came up short and Joe Burrow is going to come up short as well. The Bengals are trash. What else we got going on here? Why does it look like that? Hold on here. I'm losing it. We got the Steelers over under 1,900. Nope, 1,099, excuse me, receiving yards for Juju. Uh, I'm going over on that. I'm high on Juju this year. I touched on that um, on a different show earlier this week. And I think he's going to have a breakout year. So those are my predictions. And my over under for that shit. Fuck that threw me off. Now I want to do some Madden rankings of the ratings that they had going on. I think Benzie's bit touched on this uh, recently. I just wanted to dive in and take a look at 
what Madden came out with some of these players. I'm an avid Madden player. I think I'm going to go home today and probably play some Madden. So let's just take a look. We got Madden quarterback rankings. Patty Mahomes is a 99. Russell Wilson, 97. Lamar Jackson, 94. Breeze, 93. Tom Brady, 90. Here's where it gets sticky for me. So you got Deshaun Watson at 86, Dak Prescott at 84, who's tied with Carson Wentz at 84. If I were Dak Prescott, I'd be pissed. Carson Wentz can't even stay healthy. I'm surprised he's not a 78 until he shows me something. I'm sure Green Bay Greg doesn't like that. a Raj is an 89. I absolutely love it. You're not even in the 90s, you piece of shit. So to me, the real... Outliers here are Deshaun Watson at 86 and Dak Prescott at 84. I'd have Deshaun Watson at least at an 89 and Dak Prescott most likely at an 87. The running back ratings, Christian McCaffrey, of course, is a 99. Derrick Henry, rushing title leader from last year, is a 93. Another weird one. You got Nick Chubb and Ezekiel Elliott tied at 92. That's blasphemy. If you want to have Nick Chubb at 92, that's fine. I wouldn't, but that's fine. But then you can't have Ezekiel Elliott tied with him at 92. To me, Ezekiel Elliott's, if McCaffrey's a 99, Ezekiel's a 97, Saquon Barkley, who's a 91 and tied with Delvin Cook at 91, would be a 96, and I'd keep Delvin where he's at at 91. But this is, come on, Madden, what the fuck are you doing? This is ridiculous. To the wide receivers, can't guard Mike, 99. DeAndre Hopkins, 98. Julio, 97. I love those. Perfect. Tyreek Hill, 96. I'll give it to you. Mike Evans, 92. Keenan Allen, a 91. I won't argue with most of these. I like them. That's fine. We won't touch those. Tight ends, George Kittle, 98. Travis Kelsey, 97. Here's the one that pissed me off. Rob Gronkowski is a 95. He might be one of the best tight ends ever to play, but he hasn't been playing. Oh, we do have uh, Chad chiming in here. Julio is too high. No, he's not. He's not. I know he's getting a little long in the tooth, um, but he has to have a season where he doesn't prove anything. He had 99 receptions for 1,300 yards and what? Six, seven, eight touchdowns last year. I mean, he's consistent year in and year out. So until you drop down a little bit, you know, that's why he's not as high. That's why he's not a 99. 97's good. Dude's a beast. We'll see if Watson can do anything without Hopkins. Well, yeah, I mean, that's one thing. The nice, nice thing about Watkin or Watson is he's young, he's mobile, and he's gonna get some shit done. So and in Madden, you know, I'll just scramble with them all day. So it's all good there. So again, Rob Gronkowski is a 95. So that's just, to me, that's too high. Keep him in the 90s as of respect. Uh, but Zach Ertz, he's got to be higher than him. Even Austin Hooper, who had a hell of a year, has got to be higher than him as well. So <sighs> fucking Rob Gronkowski. Madden DN ratings. Aaron Donald, 99. The only one I really want to touch on is that Daniil Hunter's an 89, and that's probably the biggest bullshit I've ever seen in my life. The fact that he didn't crack the 90s. As soon as I'm done with Mike on the mic, I'm actually going to figure out uh, info at maddencocksuckers.com, and I'm just going to blow the email up. So Daniil Hunter needs to be over a 90. Middle linebackers, Eric Kendricks, he's an 89. If you haven't if you couldn't tell by the colors I'm wearing or by listening to my show, uh, I'm from Minnesota. I'm a diehard Vikings fan, but that doesn't mean I'm a Eric Kendricks is probably the best middle linebacker in the league behind Bobby Wagner, who's rated a 98. So we'll give you that Bobby, but 89 for Eric, you know, I'm, I'm just done. Screw you, Madden. We're done breaking down your stupid game. I used to like, NFL 2K much better until you monopolize the video game platform and wouldn't let anybody else make this shit for you. So we are going to do a TV show review. Uh... (laughs) 
My TV show review this week is The Morning Show. So this is on Apple TV. I've been kind of looking at Apple TV for a long time. I don't have DirecTV or, or cable or anything like that. I'm a streamer. YouTube TV, phenomenal. The prices just went up uh, because they added more shows, more channels, more lineups. But the nice thing with it is I just split it with Green Bay Greg. So the price goes up by, you know, a minuscule amount for the two of us. But Apple TV, I found, was only $4.99 a month. That's right. A penny shy of $5. So I added it to the lineup and I started the morning show. Alex Levy, who's Jennifer Aniston, anchors the morning show, a popular breakfast news program broadcast from Manhattan on the UBA network that has excellent viewership rating and is perceived to have changed the face of American television. Wow. After her on-air partner of 15 years, Mitch Kessler, who's played by Steve Carell, is fired amidst a sexual misconduct scandal, Alex fights to retain her job as top news anchor while sparking a rivalry with Bradley Jackson, Reese Witherspoon, a haphazard field reporter whose series of impulsive decisions brings her into a new world of TV journalism. Ooh, spicy. So IMBD gives it an 8.4 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes, a 61%. 95% like this TV show on Google. I'm going to give it an 8.8 .8 out of 10. I'm about three or four episodes in. There we go. Let's just stop that. Had a phone call here. Uh, three or four episodes in. It's great. Steve Carell is the man. Jennifer Aniston is smoking hot, as well as Reese Witherspoon. You really can't go wrong with a lineup like that. So I highly, highly recommend it. Something we brought on to Mike on the Mic last week was Would You Rather? So I have a bunch of these lined up for a lot of shows to come. And the nice thing about it is I haven't read them. I basically just copied and pasted and saved. I didn't want to put a lot of thought into doing them uh, prior. I wanted to keep it organic and uh, basically just dive right in. So before we end the show with a random fact, we're going to just do some would you rathers. All right, here we go. Would you rather be an average person in the present or a king of a large country 2,500 years ago that might be the easiest question anybody's ever asked me ever i want to be a fucking king duh i don't care if it's a million years ago i'm gonna be a king all day long would you rather have all your clothes fit perfectly or have the most comfortable pillow blankets and sheets in existence well pillow blankets sheets comfy I want to sleep like a god at night. You know, my shirt can be a little baggy or my, my pants don't have to fit quite right. I'll put on a belt, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to wake up refreshed. Would you rather move to a new city or town every week or never be able to leave the city or town you were born in? Uh, this is, uh, this is good. Uh, I can try. Oh no, you can't. You would never be able to leave the city or town you were born in. I wish they would break this down. Were you born in a town of a population of 37 or 3,700? Um, but the trouble with leaving a new city every week is oh, that could be perfect, too. You know what? Fuck it. I want to move to a new city every single week. There we go. There we go, Chad. Move every damn week. That's fine. Yeah, I'm not I'm not risking it with some ho dunk town being a farmer for the rest of my life. I'll just keep moving. If I meet a nice gal, sorry. I got to go. Would you rather be completely insane and know that you are insane or completely insane and believe you are sane? <laughs> so would you rather be completely insane and know that you are insane? Or believe you are insane. Okay, so I'd rather be crazy and know I'm fucking crazy than think I'm normal and be crazy. At least I can justify my actions. 
uh, if I know I'm fucking crazy. Like, you know what? I'm fucking crazy, man. Yeah, we're going to know it. We're going to know it for sure. Would you rather travel the world for a year on a shoestring budget or stay in only one country for a year but live in luxury? So travel the world for a year on a shoestring budget or stay in one country for a year and live like luxury. I'm picking luxury in one country. Um, you know, I'll travel after that year to other shit on a shoestring budget, but I'll go live in Spain or, you know, wherever you can pick and just uh, live like a stud for a year. I don't want to be some cheap ass walking around begging for, for scraps of food in different countries around the world. Would you rather suddenly be elected a senator or suddenly become a CEO of a major company? Here's the kicker. You won't have any more knowledge about how to do either job than you do right now. So as you are, you're walking in as a senator or a CEO of a major company. Well, this is easy. Senators don't make shit for money. I want to be the CEO of Google right now and not know shit. And you know what? I'll just ask my advisors. What the fuck's going on? How do I do this? I, or I'll just play it off. I'm the CEO. Don't ask me. Ask the COO. Would you rather live in a virtual reality where you are all powerful or live in the real world and be able to go anywhere but not be able to interact with anyone or anything? Well, I do live in the real world, and that's where I will continue to live regardless if I can't interact with anybody. I don't want to be in virtual reality uh, and be some god or king or because it's fake. Would you rather? we got three left here. Would you rather have whatever you are thinking to appear above your head for everyone to see or have absolutely everything you do live stream for everyone to see? So I'm thinking, damn, that ass looks nice. Pops up on my head so everybody can see it. Or a live stream of just my day-to-day -day life. Uh, you can live stream me for sure, 100%, because you don't want to know what's going up in this mind. You do not want to know. I'd be getting in some trouble. So live stream it. That way I can just, uh, I can fake what's going on. You know, I'll just fake it to you. You won't be able to know what I'm actually thinking. That's only me. Would you rather wake up as a new random person every year and have full control of them for the whole year? Or once a week, spend a day inside a stranger without having any control of them? Well, I don't want to not have control. I love control. So Obviously, would you rather wake up as a new random person every year and have full control of them for the whole year? So, so I'm a new person every year, but I have control or just once a week, spend a day inside them and they have control. Yeah, people are fucking nuts, man. I don't want to get in somebody else's body and just kind of sit there as they're doing their own damn thing. So no, I'll take full control. Sounds good. Last one. Would you rather live until you are 200? but look like you are 200 the whole time, even though you are healthy or look like you are 25 all the way until you die at age 65. Hmm. So you, you die at 65. Well, am I going to look like 200 when I'm a baby? That That's weird. You know what? I, I'll take 25 till 65. I'd love to live a little longer. Um, but I don't, who, we don't even know what a 200 year old looks like. They look like shit. I'm assuming I've seen 100 year olds. They don't look very good. I'll tell you that. So, yeah. Random fact to end the show each and every week here on Mike on the Mic. The first computer was invented in the 1940s. These days, supercomputers are everywhere, and they really don't need much space at all. Have an Xbox One posted up in your living room? That's a supercomputer. A laptop tablet hybrid in your bag? That's a supercomputer. Don't even get us started on the thing in your pocket. But when supercomputers first came around, they needed much, much more space. Just take a look at the world's first one, the Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer. E-N-I-A-C, a 
Originally built at the University of Pennsylvania School of Engineering in 1946, ENIAC weighed 60,000 pounds and took up a room larger than most studio apartments, 1,500 square feet. Holy shit. Shortly after construction, ENIAC was sent out to the military where, we, where it was used to calculate ballistic trajectories, transmission, launch missiles with frightening accuracy. Today, computer experts at Penn credit ENIAC with heralding in the dawn of information age. So the first computer was invented in the 1940s. Well, that's all I got for you today. I had some fun. Hope you did too. If not, whatever. We'll see you next week for episode 12 of Mike on the Mic. Be sure to catch up that new lineup on RTF Sports Network starting August 3rd, featuring my show, Green Bay Greg, Benzie's Bit, and of course, Twist, the weekend sports talk. Get at me. 